RAD Studio, Delphi, and C++ Builder each ship with hundreds of components and controls. These are pre-built classes of production quality code which you can add to your application. Some of these classes are only visible when in the designer and do not appear when you run your application. For example, this T timer component is not visible when the application is running. We refer to these classes as components or as non-visual components. Other classes such as tEdit are visible when the application is running. We refer to these classes as controls or visual components. To place a component on your form, simply browse the tool palette for the component you wish to use, click to highlight the component and then click the form to place it. You can also double click the component in the tool palette to have it placed in the center of your form. Once your component has been placed, you can position it by dragging with the mouse. As you drag the component, you'll notice that it snaps to the grid locations presented on the form within the designer. With the component selected, you can also position it more accurately by holding down the control key and using the arrow keys to adjust the position one pixel at a time. Alternatively, you can set the position of a component by setting its position properties in the object inspector. For VCL applications, these properties are named top and left, while for multi-device applications, they appear as X and Y coordinates under the position property. Similarly, you can adjust the size of a component by dragging its sizing handles. You can size a component more accurately by holding down the shift key and using the arrow keys to stretch the component a single pixel at a time. Again, you can also do this from the object inspector by altering the width and height properties for VCL applications or adjusting the width and height elements of the size property for multi-device applications. Note that you will be unable to change the size of a non-visual component as these are represented in the designer as an icon and do not have dimensions when your application is running. You can select multiple components at once by holding down the shift key and clicking on each of the components. With multiple components selected, the same editing options remain true. You may drag them together or use the control key plus the arrow keys to position them and use the shift key plus the arrow keys to size them. Their properties are also consolidated within the object inspector. For example, if I adjust the text property with two buttons selected, the text on each of them is altered. As you place controls on your form, you'll notice that they appear in the structure window. This is a hierarchical view of your form. Each component has a parent and may have children. For example, if I place a panel control onto my form and add an edit control to the panel, you'll see that the structure window demonstrates that the edit control is parented by the panel. Non-visual components will always be parented to the form. With a component selected, I can use the escape key to change the selection from the component to its parent. Continually pressing the escape key will eventually select the form, which parents all other components. Let's use what we've learned to build a registration form. I'm going to start by dropping a panel onto my form. I like to use panels and group boxes to organize related controls, and it helps to group them so that I can move them around as one piece later. I'm then going to drop a couple of labels and edit boxes onto the form. Let's set one label's text property to first name and the next to last name. Now I'll drop another label and a date edit control and we'll set the label to date of birth. Another label and edit for the username and another label and edit for the password. Let's have one more label and edit for a confirmation password. OK, now let's add a label and box for an email address. And I'm also going to add a memo control for a biography field because this control supports multi-line text. Finally, I'll add a button which will be used to submit the form. And I'll set its text property to submit. Let's run the application now and see what we have. We actually have a small problem on this form. The password fields are showing the keys that I type. Let's correct that. 
I'll use the shift key to multi-select the edit boxes. And these edit boxes have a password property, so I'll set this to true. We run the application again and we can see that the passwords are now masked. You might have noticed that there's another problem. Because I copied and pasted the confirmation password box, it's focused in the wrong order when I use the tab key to cycle through the controls. We can fix this by setting the tab order property of the controls. While we're in the editor, we can use the tab key to cycle through the controls on the form to see the order that they will tab through when the application is running. In addition to the edit controls, while in the designer, the labels are selected by tabbing. When the application is running, the labels will simply be skipped since you're unable to interact with them. Finally, when I'm ready to add the sign-up functionality to my form, I select the Submit button and switch to the Events tab in the Object Inspector. Here I double-click on the OnClick event and I will be taken to the source code where I can complete the event handler. This is an exercise for another video, however you should note that you can switch between the source code and the form designer by pressing the F12 key. If this were a C++ project, there would be two source code files a CPP file and a header file. However, cycling between them is the same, using the F12 key. This concludes this video on working with the form designer.